Let's go, let's go! Floor 6, Floor 7, and Floor 8. Top 50, here are all the things you need to know. 7k dreamer please! Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be looking at the floor 6, 7, 8 of the Heavenly Stairs. And before we begin, as usual, we're going to take a look at guild buffs. These are the guild buffs I'll be using for all three floors. Allies cooldown, increase lethal damage, crit rate increase, increase awakening gauge, charge speed, and lethal rate increase. The last three here are the most important because at this point of time, you really really want your Shane to awaken quickly and do a lot of damage. So you need to sustain her crit and lethal rate. So without further ado, let us check out the equipment for your team. For Shane, same thing, if you have watched my previous two videos, you will know how to roughly gear her. Nothing much has changed except that from floor 6 onwards, the enemies are not going to stun anymore, but they're going to electrify. So that's why I've given her electrify resistance, followed by the formation buff to give her 100% resistance. And the rest are pretty much the same standard jewels, standard accessories for heavenly stairs, and for her fighter soul, take note that I'm using physical attack instead. You can also opt to use increased damage on offensive heroes because there are offensive heroes here as well on this floor. Moving on, we have Eileen. I'm going to talk about Eileen first. You notice that I've only given her 1 HP armor and for Rachel as well only one HP armor so why is this the case the reason is because if you were to look at Bidam he targets the hero with the highest defense on your team and that will actually be Eileen or Rachel if you actually give them two HP armor so over here I've removed all of it only leaving one so the Aries can be the one with the highest defense and Bidam will target her and she will counter and cool down Shane's attack and don't worry Eileen and Rachel both have revival so they are totally fine Soy is very badly equipped as well only with HP armor that's the most important thing you need to take note and just to add Soy is used because she increases your allies crit rate by 20% because from floor 6 onwards they are no longer providing the 20% crit buff so again, Shane goes with two basic attacks and this is also very very crucial and also the most RNG factor right here, okay? You will notice that my Shane kills off the Bella right from the first turn. So there is a very low chance that this may happen to you right from the start and you have to retry a few times before you can make this occur. Otherwise, you're gonna waste one more turn to kill off Bella and that's definitely gonna make your score a little worse. Awaken Shane on the second turn, land the Phoenix. Take note that Atalanta here is also another annoying hero because she has 6 turns of height. And the thing is you cannot really counter her. So the only way to go around this is really to wait for 6 turns to be over or you can use a buff reduction skill which is a waste of a turn as well. So over here Bidam targets Aries as planned. That is totally what should happen to you. So imagine in a case where Bidam doesn't target Aries, Bidam targets someone else, then, then for this turn in particular, Shane will still be on cooldown and she will not use her skill to kill off anyone. And you will just waste one turn like that. So the cooldown is very very important. You have to cooldown Shane every single turn. Make sure that she uses her skill every single turn, basically. So poison here from Cleo is a little problematic especially if she lands it at the beginning because your Aries or Seek is going to counter and the poison is going to eat away their lives. So that's going to be a little tricky right there if you don't have any life still. So over here it was completely unfortunate because my Aries didn't counter and my Shane was on cooldown. Otherwise, I definitely could have nailed this in 7 turns which will put me far far ahead of the pack. In fact, I think it will definitely have put me in first place because I think the first place currently is at 8 turns. Yeah, so I definitely could have gotten first place which is super saddening. Everything just had to go wrong at the last moment and this was a really perfect run I would say. Yep. So I'll take it at 7 turns. <laughs> anyway, we are going on to floor 7. Floor 7 uses the same team setup. Nothing much has changed. I'm keeping it the same also to make things simple for you guys. Just take note that the fighter soul makes sure it is increased damage down on offensive heroes, okay? So here, unfortunately, my Shane didn't do the two basic attack, you know, three basic attack on one turn thing. Otherwise, she would have killed me and I don't know how many times I would have to retry for that but anyway here it goes this will be a more probable thing that will happen to you when she does one speed attack and then you know proceed with 
하스케어 So you realize that my skill rotation is kind of the same Skill with Shane first, charge up her Awakening Gage, Awaken her and then land your Phoenix Because you want to preserve the Phoenix debuff as long as possible So you know, do all your admin matters for Shane first Okay, once she's awakened, you are good to go Land your debuffs or buffs if you need to And you can proceed with spamming her skill every turn and at this point, I just want to say, if you guys are still watching this and you are thinking that Oh, there's no way I'm going to ever reach top 50 at this level And you just want to go for a 3 star clear Please check out my live stream video I know it's very very long, but I've segmented every part, time stamped So we're on turn 5 right now, and I think you get the gist of how things will go from here Basically, just hope that every enemy will hit Aries Because if they don't touch Aries, then She's not gonna counter and your Shane is gonna have that cooldown which is not what you want and it's a complete waste of a turn. Unfortunately, I didn't proc the lethal here. But at this point in Heavenly Stairs, each enemy will take about 2 skills from Shane to, you know, be removed completely. So Liu survives on 1 HP. Don't kill any skill at this point, just let a normal attack go touch Liu like this. <laughs> like how my Soi just shot an arrow at him and he died. And once that is out of the way, you can continue using the normal skill rotation, which is to spam Shane. And hope that she does more speed attacks like that because it is very, very beneficial. It makes your life so much easier. And you know, there's nothing much for me to add because it is pretty much the same strategy, which is good because as we move up, there's gonna be even longer battles, even tougher strategies and there will be tweaks for Floor 8 so do stay tuned for that I'm pretty amazed that Jupi is so tanky right here, I mean Don't we all miss her to be our DPS? <laughs> so Jupi is also another problematic hero because she has a few skills that don't do any damage that don't touch any hero so in those cases, you are pretty much just gonna waste one whole turn Because as you saw just now, Shane was still on cooldown So a frontline hero is gonna just attack Jupi when the turn comes So that was 12 turns and 3 minutes We are going to floor 8 Floor 8 is gonna take a little change You're gonna have the limit break for increased damage on magic Nothing else changes, okay? And then of course for Eileen, remember to give her back her 2 HP armors. For Aries, nothing much has changed as well. Okay, you don't have to touch the traits there. But do look at her accessory, I've given her the chance to actually reduce buff duration because we do have a Sylvester on the enemy team. So in the case whereby she procs this, it will save you one entire turn. Okay, to wait for Sylvester's Berserk to be gone. So that's gonna be very helpful. And I'm using Lina here, but you can actually use Soy. The reason why I used Lina here was because of Ryan on the enemy team. Ryan is actually a very strong hero here. If your Shane is not geared well, he will kill your Shane. And that's why I brought Lina for healing. And you can see here that my Rachel just give her back her 2 HP armor and you are pretty much set. So you are able to swap out for Soy, just remember that. Soy in fact gives you 20% buff and crit rate passively, while Lina actually uses a skill. So Lina is less efficient in that case. And you'll realize that in this entire run, I actually did not kill Lina's skill at all. So I didn't buff my crit rate. So my crit rate now, right now, is actually 82%. Okay, 82%. So I'm kind of 20% lacking and that is a very big percentage, mind you. But everything seems fine so far, so far, and I really gambled not using Lina's crit rate boots. So look at the damage that Ryan can do, and that is with my Shane very properly geared. So again, if your Shane has counter armor, she will probably counter Ryan and that's gonna be good for you because it will just bring down Ryan's health a little by little. And he did a lot of damage on me again and his Awakened skill is ready and his Awakened skill is super painful. 
And with this chain skill at turn 4, I have managed to bring down Sylvester into his Berserk. And it is very annoying again that Tao Chan will actually heal up. Which means you cannot use the same strategy later, which means to poke Sylvester because he is not at 1 HP anymore. Okay, just remember that. So I'm actually opting to use Aries' top skill again. Aries' top skill has very very bad and laggy animation, so that totally is a waste of time. But it actually saves you one turn, so that is my comfort. In this case, the Ryan didn't proc the crit which is very good, it didn't kill my Shane. My Shane did die a few times when I was trying this out because he had lethal rate and crit rate all up at one time. So that was crazy. Freya and the rest of the other enemies are not a very big threat at all. Diao Shan is the one that is gonna screw up your runs because her skills don't target any of your heroes, so they are not going to counter, Shane will be on cooldown, and when that happens, I will explain later on what you should do. So here my Rachel just kills off Ryan at 1 HP, and that is something that you must remember. And another thing is that, when Ryan is at 1 HP, there is another chance that Yao Chan may heal him or cast shields. Don't worry about the shield, I think if you are decently geared, you can one-shot the Ryan still. But if the heal comes up, then that is another problem. Here, my Shane targets Mercure, and thankfully she did speed attack to kill him off, because if she doesn't, I'm gonna waste one entire turn just for her to finish him off. And at this point, you can roughly predict where you will end up because two turns each will kill the heroes on the field and very unfortunately you saw that just now that my Shane didn't proc the lethal okay so Diao Chan is gonna take three so Diao Chan is gonna take three hits which means I'm gonna waste one additional turn so there are so many times when you know I can get a better score but things just have to go wrong like in this case she would have died if I proc that lethal but here we are So at this point of time, Phoenix runs out and you have to have to remember to cast it again otherwise you're gonna go beyond 14 turns, 15 turns because Shane's output will be super low so you must remember to cast Phoenix again and if you realize I have not been casting Lina at all as I said Shane's crit rate is still maintained, that is a very very fortunate thing but you may not be that lucky all the time. I'm gonna put this disclaimer here, you may not be that lucky because RNG can happen and you may not even proc your crit and that is gonna make your whole run fail. So yep, that was all three flaws, 6, 7, 8. I hope this video helped you and given you a better idea of how you can tackle the flaws efficiently and make it in the top 50 ranks after considering all the RNG factors that you have to face. Do give this video a like, stay tuned for more guys, thank you so much and see you!